Dude, that is nasty. <gasps> Dude! Shit! Propane off or propane on? That is the question. Holy shit. What? what happened? That was dumb. Just in time for the RV camping season. This is RV trip and RV travel mistakes. Making one of these mistakes could put an early end to your trip or make it a lot less enjoyable. And let's face it, your friends and family are looking forward to this trip. So let's not disappoint them and avoid these RV travel and RV trip mistakes. I'm Tom with enjoythejourney.life. Learn from the mistakes that Sheree and I have made and many others. We're going to cover RV newbie travel mistakes all the way up to mistakes even some of us experienced RVers still make. And stick around for number nine because that one is super important. Make sure you share your mistakes in the comments. You can get our free RV campsite setup and teardown checklist by subscribing to our newsletter. That link will be down below in the description, as well as links to all of the items I talk about in this video. Oh, and this is a doozy, not doing a tug test. Why am I sharing this painful moment again? Well, like Cherie likes to say that I'm saving thousands of truck beds around the world by sharing this painful example. It's just cringy, I know. Sorry to share it again, but there's a lot of new RVers out there on the road, and I want to make sure everybody avoids this. And think this is not common? Wow, we've heard from hundreds of you that have actually made the same mistake. And it's not just the physical damage to your truck. People have gotten their hands crushed in there as well. So it can be physically damaging to yourself as well. So do a tug test. I've got the complete series on RV Crush's truck. I will link that below. And in video number three, I explain the tug test in detail. You want to get that right. But the RV Crushes Truck video is another example of several other mistakes that I will just touch on. That being in a hurry, again, don't be in a hurry. That's when you miss steps. Also, not knowing your equipment. That was a brand new hitch to me, even though it wasn't a new hitch. But it was just new to me, and I didn't understand how it worked completely. Also a huge mistake and buying too big of an RV for that truck. Yes, my Chevy 3500 Dually truck was not big enough. It, I know it seems crazy, but uh, you have to check the tow capacity of your truck. But even the RV dealer told me that that truck would be fine. He just asked, do you have a Dually? And I said, yeah. I said, okay, you're fine. The RV dealer just wants to sell you an RV. They're not responsible if you have the right tow vehicle or not. So lots of learning lessons from this and a related RV Crushes truck story from a viewer, Bill, said that he was unhitching in the rain and he forgot to take his tailgate down. Oh, that is a huge one right there. Many, many people have made that mistake. Just being in a hurry, forget to take the tailgate down, and you're buying a new tailgate. I think he said that cost him $400 in damage. Propane off or propane on? That is the question. All right, here's a controversial RV travel mistake. And I really don't know which side is right. I have heard so many stories and advice, opinions on both sides. You guys can weigh in on what you do, and for you newbies out there, I guess it's up to you to figure out which way you want to do this, but some of you are probably going to know what I'm talking about, but it's traveling with your propane tanks turned on and your RV refrigerator turned on as well. Now, 
Some people say that it's very dangerous and you should not do that. It can lead to a fire. Some places apparently it's illegal to do that. I remember being told to make sure my propane tank was off when we took the RV on a ferry. But still others, even RV technicians, have told me that modern RVs are made to shut the propane down if there is a leak. So there is no danger to leaving that on. And how are you gonna keep your refrigerator cool if you have to shut it down, you know, while you're traveling through the day? So I get it. I, it. There's confusion in this area, and I would like to have a like definitive answer on this. And I've been RVing for almost 10 years now. So it's one of those things, maybe it is RV specific. We're lucky now with our solar and batteries, we can leave the RV refrigerator on and run 100% on AC. So we don't have to be on propane while we're going, but it's something you'll have to decide for yourself and your RV when you're on the road. And here's a viewer story from Doug. He says, my biggest mistake, we had reached our camping destination after a rather short travel day that did require using our restroom a couple of times along the way. I removed the cap from the sewer drain and quickly learned that I had forgotten to close the black tank valve after flushing from our previous camping trip. Oh, oh dude, that is nasty. Not pleasant. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I have not made that mistake. With crossing fingers, I have not made that mistake. So don't make that one. That would be very unpleasant. And when you're on the road and you can't make it to your campground in one travel day, where do you park if you don't want to have to pay for another night stay? Well, hit that subscribe button. That way you catch my video, 50 free places to park overnight or longer. That's coming out soon. And the next RV travel mistake is not knowing your tail swing. This is especially for RV newbies. If you have a trailer like a fifth wheel, what is tail swing? Well, it's exactly as it sounds is your tail, the back of your RV will swing out wider than your turn, especially if you turn tight. This has happened to us on many occasions and actually here's an example uh, Sheree is behind me and recording this when I take this turn really sharp there's a car attempting to go around me and I swing out and it, it can lead to an accident <gasps> Holy what? what happened This is knocked off right here. What? So making that turn, the back end hit it? Did What kind of damage you have over there? It's, it's scratched. Do you want to grab this? Yeah, well that was, <laughs> that was dumb. So what is the solution to this? Don't take the turn quite so tight. Make it wider and check your side mirror. Try to make that turn if that lane is clear. And here's an example of me making a turn wider and you can see the difference that the tail of the RV doesn't actually swing into the next lane. And for many of you guys, you never see what's back there because you don't have another vehicle following you. So that might be an eye opener. Yes, tail swing, watch out for it because uh, it can lead to problems. And Sue says, not only is there tail swing, but there is tail drag. Yes, totally. Uh, you can have a driveway or a campsite that's in a slope. You can totally have tail drag. In the momentum, when we had the kayaks attached to the back, we had the kayaks dragging quite a bit that was an issue but we had the spare tire drag on the columbus rv the spare tire was near the back and it 
it was just so close to the ground. So when we were navigating unlevel roads and driveways, it was very possible for that tire to connect with the pavement twice. It broke free from the bracket there and it had to be repaired. Yeah, just not, in, that spare tire was just not in a good position. And the next RV travel mistake is not checking your tires before hitting the road. I think RV tires are one of the biggest challenges out there for us travelers. What I'm gonna do right now is go ahead and fill these up. They're a little bit under pressure. I have a TPMS system right here, but you can also use just a tire gauge if you want, but highly recommend this. You need to have an air inflator with you that's powered with a 12 volt connection like this so you can easily air up your tires on the road as needed. Then you can take your TPMS monitor and mount it inside your vehicle somewhere where you can easily see the temperature and how your tire pressures are doing as they heat up as you're going down the road. You don't have to look at it a lot because you do have your warnings on here that will let you know if a tire is getting too low or if the pressure is getting too high which has happened to me so get yourself one of these seriously one of the best investments you can make and here's a viewer story from will actually will has several stories to share not having a tpms system he was going down the road with his RV and he got pulled over by a cop and he said, did you know you lost your tire back there? And he had no idea the tire had come clean off his RV and he didn't even know it and it was in flames in a ditch. So that's a real story from one of our viewers. Another reason again to have a TPMS system. And how would that help? Well, basically your alarm would go off and say, that sensor is no longer connected and you would you would know something was up right away and the next mistake is not knowing the height of your rv when you are hitched up then we're going to take that hitched height of your rv which leads us to our next mistake and that's not having an rv safe gps directions while you're traveling and we use RV Life Trip Wizard exclusively for that. What you can do is take that hitch height and enter that in there and what that does is it only takes you on roads that are safe for your height and size of RV to travel on. I mean, we have a huge RV. We're like 43 feet long before you even add the truck to it and we've gone down roads when we use like Google Maps or ways before that we shouldn't be going down or you get a bridge that you can't go underneath. So this just routes you around that kind of stuff. And I mean, we use RV Life Trip Wizard exclusively to track all of our campgrounds and you can find campground reviews and so much more. We highly recommend it. Uh, and we actually have a 25% off discount code I will put down below in the description. And the next RV trip mistake is not making reservations early, especially during the busy season. I'm sure many of you have run into this before where the campground you wanna get into is completely booked many months in advance. Some people are making reservations more than six months in advance especially if you're gonna be going into a busy uh, touristy area or it's prime season. So many awesome places to go to have such a narrow couple of months that it's the most ideal time to be there. Those you have to plan far in advance. How do we find awesome campgrounds and places to stay? We use several different apps. The first one is The Dirt and the dirt will show you the reviews, pictures, 
all kinds of information about places to stay, but also the dirt will show you places to camp for free, like BLM locations and places like that. I have a link for a free trial down below in the description so you can check it out. We also use RV Life Campgrounds and they have tons of reviews, great pictures, what kind of hookups an RV park has, what the cell service is like. And you should already have access to that because you have a subscription to RV Life Pro. And our next RV trip mistake is not using a diesel fuel discount card like the one we use right here, uh, the TDS card it saves sometimes 20 30 or more cents per gallon off of diesel this is a great help for saving money on fuel especially this year with fuel prices so much higher and i'll put a link down below where you can sign up for the card that we use and speaking of filling up with fuel beware of gas or fuel deserts i wouldn't let your tank get maybe less than a half to a quarter at the least before filling up because like we're traveling through North Dakota right now and we haven't seen a fuel station for a long ways so nice to find this flying J right here <laughs> so don't run out of fuel it's being too heavy this is a rampant problem out there. So many people overload their RVs with too much stuff. And I know we want to have our stuff, but you got to check the weight rating of your RV to see exactly how much cargo capacity that you've got. And what I would do is load it all up and all the passengers as well that are going on your camping trip and go get yourself weighed and check that against what the rating is for your RV and your tow vehicle because being overweight can affect all kinds of equipment on your RV and it's not safe. So get yourself weighed and don't travel overweight. And the next RV travel mistake and closely related to the first one is having too small of a truck to tow your trailer with. Yes, I've done that because the salesperson at the dealer said, oh yeah, this truck can pull anything and it was bad and it's not safe. So what you do is you get your RV first. Pick out your RV first and then you go buy your vehicle you're going to tow with. And it's better to have more room on the other end. I could get by with a smaller truck. I don't have to have the Ford F450, but I like it. It's heavier duty than what I need, but it gives me that capacity to go bigger. Nah, I don't want to go bigger. <laughs> but anyway, have the right size tow vehicle common mistake out there and and again you see it all the time these trucks pulling these huge rvs and the back is sinking down like this and yeah not good and the next rv travel mistake is not having a great extended warranty we use wholesale warranties and we've been really happy with them. And actually, if you have a tire issue on the road, like a blowout, they'll not only pay for the spare to get put on, the road service, they will also pay to put a brand new tire on your RV. And I've mentioned this before and I won't go into the details now, but RVs lately have had lots of quality issues and that's pretty much every brand out there there's a few that maybe i wouldn't recommend an extended warranty on but it's a very few and within the first month or two of actually adding the policy i had to use it for a tire issue a microwave went out had hot water heater problems and that was just in the first couple of months. So highly recommend a great extended warranty. And we've got a link down below to wholesale warranties. And that's who we use. And the next RV travel mistake is going too fast. Yes, speeding. I get passed by so many RVs just flying. And there's several reasons for this. The number one, 
safety. When you go slower, you have more time to react. Uh, you can stop quicker. And big RVs that are, are very heavy, you can't just stop on a dime. Also, don't follow people really closely either. Have lots of space, again, because you can't stop on a dime. And you also want to keep an eye out for debris that's on the road. And again, be going slower gives you more time to brake. You can brake faster. And also slower speeds will save you money with the high fuel prices these days. Just slowing down five or 10 miles per hour will get you a higher fuel economy. And everybody wants to save money. Maybe you don't want to go 60, but you could go 65 or 70. The other thing is many RV tires are not rated to go faster than 60 or 65 miles an hour. You need to check the rating on your RV tires and make sure you don't exceed that rating. And another reason to go slow is because of curves. You can't take a curve like you used to in a car when you're towing a big trailer or any kind of trailer because trailers can flip if you go too fast around a curve. So another reason to go slow. And the next mistake is not doing like a safety inspection when you make a stop. Like I just got groceries here at Walmart and I've got a little ways to go before we get to the campground. So a safety check is basically doing a quick look around, checking tires. I'm gonna check the hitch, make sure the safety pin is in there. just so you can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and check the safety cable that it's attached and uh, the electrical plug is locked in there really good. You can't check too much. I don't know, how should I say that? I'll look up there, I'll check the slide toppers. Uh, check the tires, look at the shackles and the leaf springs. Just make sure everything looks good under there. Got to replace that snap pad that came off. <laughs> I'll look at the slide toppers and the awnings up there to make sure those all look good. Those can tend to billow out in the wind sometimes and, you know, in case I brushed up against a tree and I didn't realize it. <laughs> I'm gonna check the tires on this side here, so. Yeah, looking good for the last leg of this particular trip. Yeah, sun's starting to go down over there. And that reminds me of the next RV mistake is arriving at night. Trying to maneuver a free spot at night, not level. <laughs> Big mistake when you have a big rig like we do. Now, some smaller RVs may not be that big a deal. I know some people prefer to travel at night. I, I, I don't know, I'm not into that. I wanna be able to see, uh, see my side mirrors and see all the way back, see what's going on. When you're trying to navigate a narrow campground at night, oh my gosh. And we have another viewer story. And another story from Will made the mistake of traveling too far and arriving at the campground after dark, narrow road, trees close together, darkness, and a big rig. Not a good combination. Got started into the site, stopped to move a picnic table, and discovered that the awning was right up against a tree, was able to back it off the tree, but the damage had already been done. Abrasion holes in along about six foot of the awning. Next attempt went better as I had two spotters with lights to keep watching both sides of the trailer. So again, don't park at night if you can possibly help it. And the next RV travel or RV trip mistake is not doing a shakedown trip. What is a shakedown trip? Well, if your RV is brand new or it's a new RV to you, you need to figure out how everything works. You may have been shown at the dealer all of the different things and how it works, and you're probably excited to get out on your first 
camping trip. But trust me, there is so much to learn and there are likely issues with your RV that will need to be fixed at the dealer before you plan your first official trip. So what you can do is maybe look for a local campground 50 or 100 miles away. Plan a short weekend trip where you and your significant other can just focus on learning all of the systems. You want to know how your RV handles on the road. If you're not used to driving or towing a big RV, then practice. You can find a large empty parking lot and put out some cones and you can practice backing up your RV, pretending like you're going into a campsite, practice doing some different maneuvers and just learning the feel of driving your RV. At the campsite, you can test all of the different equipment and make a list of any issues that might need to be fixed at the dealer. That way, you are gonna be in a much better position to have an awesome, fun, official first trip in your new RV when you've got all that figured out. Now, some people will do this in their driveway, but I don't recommend that unless you absolutely have to because you don't have that driving to the campground experience and backing in and all of that kind of stuff that is good to figure out in advance. And a related viewer story to this from the Smalls RV Adventures. You are so correct. We tested out our RV in our driveway. We forgot so many things we needed in the house. During our first weekend trip, we learned how important pillows are because we forgot them. So maybe there's an advantage to testing out in your driveway because you can say, oh, well, I forgot that and you can just get it quicker. But uh, yes, do the shakedown trip with your RV and not driving too long. Maybe not planning to go for 500 miles or more in one day. It's a lot, and if you get tired, that can also be unsafe. So we typically only do two or 300 miles a day. I'm doing a little bit more today, about 350, and that's really pushing it. And the next RV travel mistake is not moving over for vehicles that are stopped on the side of the road. This is actually required for emergency vehicles in some states. And you can get a ticket if you don't move over. But it's a safety issue because unlike with a car, you can't maneuver uh, as fast to get out of the way, let's say, if somebody walks out, steps a little bit into the road as they're looking at something, working on something, and so super important, if at all possible, you get into the other lane and create as much space as possible between those vehicles stopped on the side of the road. And the next RV trip mistake is to travel angry. What do I mean by that? Well, just traveling in a really bad mood. I think it's easy when you're packing up for a trip and you're stressing out, you're in a hurry to get into an argument with your spouse or significant other, your kids, and to be kind of grumpy uh, starting out this trip is just a bad recipe for issues to get distracted with an argument or bad feelings about something. Just slow down for a few moments, breathe deeply a few times, and have an agreement with whoever you're having an argument with that you're driving this huge RV right now and it's not the time to have an argument or to be in a bad mood. Discuss it later because you don't want the distraction of being in a bad mood when you need to be 100% alert and on focus when you are traveling on the road with your RV. So that's all of the RV travel mistakes I'm gonna be sharing with you today, but now it's your turn. 
what RV travel mistakes have you made or which ones did I miss that need to be on the list? Go ahead and comment down below and let us know and share your experience or mistakes with everybody else so we can all be safer on the road this camping season. Now it's time to set up your campsite and have a fun camping trip. You can get our free RV campsite set up and tear down checklists by following the link down below and subscribing to our newsletter. Also, we have other RV mistake videos. We will link to those down below as well. And make sure you hit that subscribe button so you catch our video, 50 free places to park your RV. That's gonna be coming out soon. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and remember, Enjoy! Stop.